bunting. Bunting are essentially just triangles, fabrics in the form of triangles that have been kind of framed by um, a piece of another fabric. So in this case, what I did was I found complementing colors for um, the two fabrics. I did two sides because I wanted them to be a little bit heavier. I want to hang them outside so I didn't want them to be flapping too much in the wind. So what I did was I alternated the colors and it's the same two colors or two patterns, fabrics. And then what I did was I um, drew butterfly shapes, traced them onto a piece of paper, cut them out, then I traced it onto the green fabric for each for each of the triangles. Then I took a contrasting thread, which in this case was hot pink, and I went over the wings multiple times to create the butterfly effect. Then I went outside of the uh, wings and made the shape again. After that, I created the body by going, starting here, and four times going up and down until I went back here. And this way, I could use my threads for the antennae. That's how I did that. And then after that, I did a little butterfly flight pattern. But it's up to you. I mean, you don't have to get too fancy, but you have that option. In terms of what's holding them together, the string, I used a fabric that I cut two inches wide and then I folded it in half. And so each triangle was slipped under between the two layers of the fabric and then I just sewed it at the bottom, there is a seam. So I just kept going, starting at the very edge all the way through, all the way to the other end. But what I did was I pinned each triangle before sewing and I spaced them two inches apart. For the triangles, what I did was I used a piece of paper and figured out how big I wanted my triangles. Then, uh, based on the paper, I was ready to make it onto the cardboard. For the cardboard, you can use anything. I used a waffle box. You can use cereal box. It's actually very good because it's not too thin, it's not too thick. In my case, what I did was um, I made the triangle 7.5 inches in width and 10 inches on each side. The way I figured this out was I drew a line that was seven and a half inches long. Um, I marked the middle of the line. I drew another line, which was again seven and a half inches long. Again, marked the middle of that point, joined the points together. So I have a line running in the middle here. Okay, my line would have been here. At that point, when I have the point, what I did was I went to the edge of the line with my ruler to the point and drew a line. And I did the same thing on this side. This created the triangle that I have right now. After that, I cut it out and then I had my template. So then what I did was I took the fabric, in this case it was that fabric, but it doesn't matter. Um, Try to find one where you have a pretty good edge. That one has a pretty good edge, straight edge. Makes it easier. So what you will do is you will take your triangle, put it to the edge, like this, and you will trace your uh, triangle with a pencil or a pen, whatever is visible. It doesn't matter if the marks show you. You can always trim the edge. That, that's how I see it. I mean, you can use Taylor's chalk, Hinge chalk, if that makes you feel better. Okay, so you put it here, and then you use your pencil, and you can make lines this way. Okay. 
so that you can actually see them and you can follow them when you're actually cutting, right? So I made my triangle this way. Now what I want to do, that's going to be my triangle. What I want to do is save the fabric so I don't want to cut in different places because I'm going to waste a lot of fabric. So what I want to do is line it up to the lines more or less where I had them, right? So it's going to be a flip side of the other triangle. So I'm going to put the triangle here and I'm going to trace it for myself this way now. And at the bottom, okay? And now the next shape, as you can guess, will be flipped the other way. And again, up against the previous marking, which is here. And I'm going to make the line up here, okay? So when I start cutting, I'm going to have a triangle here, a triangle there, a triangle there, and so on. So in the end, I'll have something like this. What I did was I cut it out, then I used my pinking shears and created the edge so the fabric wouldn't fray, especially in the case of cotton. This is not cotton, so I'm not as worried about it. I could keep the edge straight. It's up to you. Okay. What I did here was I cut out, by using my cardboard, I cut out a whole bunch of triangles, as you can see. What I decided to do is basically use the uh, inside or the wrong side of the fabric, because I prefer the color. And I put them together. This is the good side, I'm, that's going to be my bad side. And then I pin them together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create about a half an inch seam all around the triangle. Okay, so let's see. So again, starting at the very edge, I'm going to put the presser foot down and forward. did was once again I used um, my pinking shears. I've used them before on trimming fabric so now I'm doing that again. Um, so I created a seam. I went around all the edges with a contrasting thread again because I enjoy the, the uh, contrast. But you can make it a similar color so it doesn't stand out. It's up to you. And then what I did was I trimmed the extra fabric with my shears, like that, okay? So it creates a little kind of like a tooth edge. Now what I did was I took fabric and I trimmed two inches across, two inches wide, and I created this long strip. Then I took my shears and to even it out, to give it a nicer look, I just cut away you know, as I went. So that's what I've created. So in terms of the bunting, the triangles, what I would do is take this, uh, fold it roughly in half, roughly in half. You can always trim extra if you need to. So this is more or less my halfway point. So what I want to do is center the piece in the middle and work my way out. I could do it this way, that looks okay, or I could actually fold it into the layer. I'm going to fold it. Lay it flat, fold it over until you're happy with it. And again, you need to pin it just to make sure that it stays on there for you. And you can always adjust it a little bit if it's if the fabric is popping out. I mean, you can put an extra pin or whatever. So then, as I mentioned to you earlier, I want to create a gap between the next 
piece. So what I want to do is I want to fold that gap just the same so it looks good and again create about a two inch, you can measure it out, you can use your measuring tape or ruler. This piece in the middle and sandwich it between the uh, fabric. Then I created a two inch space so I folded the fabric about two inches apart, that's where I want my next section. So pop it in, cover it up and pin and just continue this pattern. Uh, trace a shape that you want in fabric. So basically I'll draw it freehand, pin it on and sew it onto your triangle and embellish it by doing little designs or whatever and then you're done. Have fun!